we want to be able to isolate one person. I want to be able to add emphasis to this person right here. Right now, if I ran this as an advertisement, all of them are kind of equally weighted. But if I wanted to draw one person out without necessarily getting rid of the background or getting rid of everybody else, here's one method of being able to do this. Uh, the trick is we're going to be working with our layers. So I got my layers palette open. And what I'm going to do is just make a quick copy of the background layer. Since I'm going to be working on the copy, I'll turn off our original background so we can see exactly what we're working with. We need to select just her. I've got my quick selection tool. Actually, I've got my brush tool. It's a quick selection tool. We'll make it bigger. I'm going to quickly, quickly select only her. Since I am going quickly, I may mess up. Actually, that's OK. Oops, I've accidentally selected some of him. Remember, you can hold down your Option key. That'll get rid of his shirt as well and his buckle, that part. With her selected, what's one way I can quickly mask her out? What do I use? It's my favorite thing to use. Yeah, layer mask. This icon here. We'll add a layer mask to what I'm working on. Every area that's black is now completely masked out. And remember, if you've made a mistake, for instance, I can zoom in on her belt and I see that I've messed up part of her belt. I need to add on to that. Since I'm working in the black and white layer mask, I can choose my paintbrush tool and everywhere I paint white, let's bump it back up, I can actually bring back her, her belt. Up on her shoulder, you can see I've messed up here. If I swap my colors over to black, I can actually mask that out. Not erasing, just masking. And I've got her by all by herself. Remember, we're working on two different layers. She's on one, so if we turn on the background layer, looks like nothing happened. But remember, she's on her own layer dancing off by herself. Let's select the background layer. Now, whatever I do to here, will not affect her image because she's on another one. In our case, we're going to do a, a blur filter. Filter, blur, any one of these will work. Gaussian tends to be the easiest one. And I can bump up the radius of this one, something where it gives me enough contrast. If I go too far, it's going to obviously blow that way out. If I get it just a little subtle blur, just enough to give it an idea, difference between her face and his face, from this, this is my finished results. Does, doesn't your eye being drawn to her simply because she's the most in focus? This is what I mean by adding emphasis to an area or isolating an area. You can do this for yours. Other things you can do, not necessarily for this exercise, but since there's a background layer, I can do something like put a color in between both of these layers. Remember the quick way of doing this, there's a layer. We'll choose a new fill solid or gradient, either way will work, bless you. And so if I added a color, say red, in between here, naturally she's cut out, but if I change the blending mode of that one, now everybody else in the background is on a different color and that's another way of blocking them out. Very, very easy thing to do. All I've done is masked her out on her own layer and everything else gets whatever Photoshop treatment I want to give to it. We don't need that. Once we're finished, all we got to do is flatten this, turn it into one layer. File down here, flatten. And then I'll save this as a JPEG and upload to Moodle from here. So there's what I'm looking for with that. For those of you who are working primarily in Photoshop to pull your stuff together, do you see a way you can use this technique in your layout? Something you want to do? Okay. Uh, the second one, working in Illustrator. How can we mask out something in Illustrator? Not the Choctaws t-shirt. Who designed that? Do y'all know? Okay, they didn't do a good job. I was about to hate on some people. So. Um, I've given you three different boards. And what we want to do is we want to be able to cut out these JPEG images and have them isolated inside of their little vector areas. So you've got a tiger, you've got a frog, and you've got a parrot. Now the images here, these are JPEGs, but what I want to do is I want to get rid of the jungle that's around them and actually just isolate that one image by itself. 
I've already started on the frog. What I did was I used my pen tool. So this will give you some practice using your pen tool. And I've drawn a black outline around the shape that I have, going all the way from start, and I believe I stopped off right here, to finish. Do a good job on it. This is something that you want to get the full outline. They are full of curves. This is the type of thing that if you haven't practiced with the pen tool, this will give you some good practice. And now I've got a complete outline of this guy. Hey, if I hit Shift X, it'll swap up my fill and stroke colors so I can see exactly what I have. Here's the magic trick in Illustrator. Any object, in this case the outline of the, the frog, that you have on top of another object can act as a clipping mask. And so when I select both of these, I've got my outline and my image now selected. I'll zoom out. This is where I can go to Object, all the way down towards the bottom, Clipping Mask, and Make. And it will mask out the rest of that area. Now I've got just the frog by itself. If I needed to go in and tweak this, like let's say I messed up on his hand or anything, this is where I can use my Direct Selection tool and go in and actually, whoops, let's deselect that, move my mask around and tweak it, add it as well. If I needed to tweak the inside of it, let's say I needed to move my frog around, I can double click it, go into isolation mode, now I can actually click on the image and I'm dragging the image itself. It's kind of like when you work in Illustrator, you know how in Illustrator, oh, excuse me, InDesign. InDesign has its own frame, you can move the picture around the frame, works the same way. In our case, however, we want to them nice and lined up. There's Mr. Frog. I'm going to double click to get out of that. And there's the frog now is isolated, imaged from there. Do the same thing for the parrot. Do the same thing for the tiger itself. But if you're working in Illustrator, give yourself an object. Topmost object will allow you to add that clip and mask. Any questions on this? If you're, for those of you who are laying your layout in Illustrator, do you see how you can maybe use this as your idea in some way? All right, we won't save it. The final one is in InDesign. And in this case, I've already given you the InDesign file we're gonna work with. Not this one, go away, go away, come on. There we go. In our case, we have a family down here at the bottom and I wanna be able to blend them a little bit better with the background that we have. Right now, this isn't a bad layout. It's nice, it's central, it's uh, cut off right here, so I've got you know, equal weight top and bottom. But what I really wanna do is I want to mask out and get rid of this background and only see our people. Now to do this, we need to open the image in Photoshop. And if y'all don't remember, you can click on, select the image, not the, just the outline. And when I control click, I can edit with, come on, there we go. And we want to make sure we're using Photoshop CC. This will open up, jump into Photoshop. Once we're in Photoshop, just like with the other one, I'm going to use my quick selection tool to select the area I want to keep. I'm going to go quick to see this. You know, it's difficult to see from the top. I don't want to get any of the background. I do want to get the outline of people get the ground that they are sitting on. Here's these little pieces. Oh, got to get her hair. Do, 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 do. All looks good. Looks good to me. Oh, missing his foot. There we go. Once I've got the outline made around everyone, here's the magic part about this. Rather than working in my layers palette, I need to open up my Paths palette. Paths will allow me to save a path channel to the image that I'm working on. Since I have a selection, this one in the center will allow me to make a vector path from my selection, and it'll look like this. I can tell that I've missed a little part. If that happens, you can always go back. We do need to rename this. Anything besides Working Path will do. I'm just going to call it Family. And now it's saved from here. 
I can save this as a JPEG, so just go to File and Save, nothing special. And when I close it out and jump back into InDesign, it looks like nothing has happened. However, to activate the clipping path that we've created, that's found under Object, do select the picture you want, Object. Here's, there's Clipping Path, and open up your options from here. Is this looking familiar? Y'all remember doing this? Different types of clipping paths. In our case, we want the Photoshop path that we just created. Family's the only one we have. If we turn on preview, we get a preview of what it looks like. There's our vector little outline that we have. There's a little bit that I obviously missed in my selection. When I say okay, now they're completely clipped out. Looks pretty good. Now what's the downside of using this kind of clipping path? Is anybody picking up on that? When would it not really look very good? What do you think? What if she had some very frizzy hair or some long hair that was like blowing in the wind? Well, right now it looks okay because there's a nice sharp edge between the outline of the figures in the background. So if I have a sharp outline, this actually works out really, really good. But if I've got frizzy hair, it tends to be a lot more difficult to do. So what I would want to do in that case is actually make my background in Photoshop. Photoshop will allow me to change the transparency and I can work with the frizziness using a layer mask. Then I can bring it into InDesign and lay out the rest of it from that way. The same is true in working in Illustrator. You want to have a nice clean vector edge. So this will be our exercise for today.